Hi, David Bizard here, and you're watching Paratech 10. Our subject for today is valve pockets in pistons and checking to see if we have enough with whatever cam we're using. Now, I've been through a lot of videos on the internet and they all are telling you how to check the clearance and, uh, uh, and maybe add clearance to it, but they're what they're never doing is telling you how to add clearance in the most powerful manner. There's a lot more to valve pockets than just cutting a pocket, as you will see. Now the build that uh, I'm doing here is a small block Chevy with a 3.875 stroke, that's 3 and 7 eighths, eighth of an inch longer, than the typical 383 crank, which is 3.750. This is paired with a block, which sonic out pretty good, and we were able to bore it safely to plus 60. This gives us a displacement of 401 inches. Pretty damned handy displacement. This thing should make some good torque numbers. Anyway, on to our piston to valve clearance. The heads we are using are, and if you can see the logo on the end, that's good. These AFR uh, budget heads here. Now, I'm also in the process of doing a uh, review on these heads, so, uh, but I'll tell you now, they've turned out pretty damn good. Here's the ported cylinder on those AFR heads. Flow numbers looked really good. Uh, we were hovering around the 280 mark at 600 lift. Here we go. The first thing to do is to put in some valves with light springs. There we go, there's the springs that I'm going to use. One of the first jobs to do is to install the crank timing gear. It's always best to use the proper tools for it. I don't want anyone criticizing me that I'm using this hammer. Once the gear is on, turn the crank until the piston reaches TDC. Right, there we go, just a Whoops, just a tad more there. Right, there we go. Once it's at TDC, you should see a zero mark on the cam gear or a dimple that brings it totally in line with the center of the cam. Then you know it's in the right position. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but this is my... Uh, timing gear that I'm going to be using on this build. It's a comp cam's adjustable one and it can advance and retard the cam about eight degrees and there's the uh, timing figures if you can see it. The reason I use an adjustable one is I'm going on the dyno and adjusting the timing, the advance and retard of the cam is a crucial part of a good dyno setup. The stock cam wheel does not have a fancy Timken thrust washer like this. Uh, on this comp cam's gear, it installs simply into the back like that, and th this face goes up against the block. Once the crank timing gear is on, temporarily install the cam timing gear. Just push it a little way onto the cam, and 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 dowel so that it rotates uh, without wobbling. Right now we're going to turn that until this timing dot here aligns with the one on the crank and that will be right about there.
There we go. Securing screws now ready to go in. Once the timing chain assembly is on, it is time to fill the valve pockets with clay, which is what I've already done here. Now, some people will use a dial gauge, uh, some people will use clay, and some will use both methods. I favor the clay method, especially as I move valves around and things like this. And you can't be absolutely sure that the valve spacing that you're using is what the pistons were designed for. So this is a check. Uh, the other thing is, is that the dial gauge only shows clearance this way. The clay shows clearance around the edge of the valve. So that's a surefire way of doing it. So that's how I'm going to show you. After installing the head gasket of your choice, uh, and this is an option, you could check the clearance without a head gasket and that would give you a safety margin of the thickness of the gasket. However, I need to know exactly what I've got here, so I've put my uh, uh, gas head gasket in place. Now it's time to put the cylinder head on. And then bolt it down firmly. You don't have to put all the bolts in and torque it up. That's not necessary. Just bolt it down firmly. Just in case I forgot to mention this, uh, when you put the head on, make sure the piston's halfway down the bore so that you're not impacting the uh, clay. Uh, two head bolts are enough. Torque them up to about 40 foot-pounds and we're good to go. Next, install the guide plates. I'm using these Iski style adjustable guide plates here so that I can align the slots with the, uh, the pushrod slots with the valves properly. Right, so let's just tweak those down. Now before you fully tighten the studs, just nip them up with the wrench and we're going to check the alignment of these push rods. To do that we will just drop on a rocker onto each stud and make sure that the rocker is reasonably lined up this way on top of the valve and also just to make sure the push rod length is right check to see that the roller is approximately in the middle of the valve and then we're okay. Now we're good to put the lash nuts on so that I will do. Tighten that down. I'm not going to put any lash into these. I'm just going to snug them up so that there's zero clearance. Right and at this point we are ready to turn things over so let's do that. Okay at this point we're ready to turn the engine over right we will do that two turns right one two there we go now that we should have let's just get that down to there that we should have some good imprints in the clay now it's time to take everything off and see where we are with the clearance Well, here is our clay imprints. What I'm going to do now is cut them in a, a cross section across the middle or the center line of the valve so that you can see the thickness involved. As you can see, we have plenty of valve pocket clearance. And this should be the case because I'm just dummying up this exercise so you can see what's going on. But you can see that ridge there that's where I cut them from the previous uh, 
depth they were before. So I knew it was going to be about this, but look there, we've got that much clearance there. And we have about a sixteenth of an inch of clearance there between the edge of the valve on both of them. Right. Now, what do we do if we don't have enough clearance? So, how do you find where the center of the valve will be so that it can be machined? You're, for most of you, that'll mean taking it into a machine shop. Well, it's quite simple. Take a valve, an old one, cut the head off, grind a concentric point here like a center uh, punch, and with the piston that you're marking, 15 degrees down the bore, because closest approach is not at TDC, it's about 15 to 18 degrees, right? So put, put it 15 degrees down, put the valve in, center punch it. There's a center mark for your machine shop to uh, uh, guide them and they'll just set the piston over, locate on that center punch and machine your valve cutouts. So that's the easy way of doing it. Now I did mention in the title that we're going to do these valve cutouts and not only give clearance to the valve but also we, we're going to add some power to the engine and here's what I'm talking about deshrouding the valves here's what I mean we're going to do a radius on here that's the simplest form and I'll now explain why in this shot I'm showing off a computer uh, generated uh, uh, flow pattern in a port this is what we call a virtual flow bench Here's the piston crown here, valve and obviously the port here. You can see that the valve here is being shrouded by the uh, uh, edge of the valve pocket. That's with a plain Jane straightforward one. And this is only a relatively small pocket, you know, about, it'd be about an eighth of an inch deep. Most of them are deeper than that. And as you can see, this is restricting the flow out here, right? We only have this section here and it's low pressure and not much flow. So let's take a look at a drawing out of my porting book. Now, I would like to say that although I've featured this book a lot, it certainly isn't my only book. It's just one of 35 that I've written. Anyway, Let's go and look at the drawing of the uh, uh, piston porting. Here's a drawing out of my porting book. A valve here, cut out in the piston here, right? And you can see how it's shrouded by this here. So, since air wants to come out like this, what we do is we round this edge off here. That should explain it. But that's not the only form this deshrouding can take. In the school, we teach how there's many forms and uh, they can be applied for different uh, applications. Let's quickly talk about how these cutouts affect power. If you do it on the exhaust only, it makes the exhaust timing look a little longer. The net result is that the engine will lose a bit of power under, a, say, typically about 3,500 RPM down, about three to 4,500, it's about even, and then above that, it adds a little power. When I, when I say a little power, I mean, it's not a big amount, about four horsepower on a otherwise 450 horse 383. Now, uh, I need to say how I got the chance to do all this and give credit to uh, uh, those concerned. Uh, back in about 1985-ish, I did some testing for Seal Power, uh, Seal Power's chief engineer, then Cal De Bruin, who was a 
great guy to work with. And um, he wanted to know all about the effects of combustion with different chamber shapes. Now, the valve cutouts constitute part of the chamber shape. And so we had several sets of pistons where we dynoed them with no fancy cutouts, they were just cut straight. And then with, without taking the pistons out, I would grind, grind, cutter is a better word, cutter a form on the cutouts, either the exhaust, the intake, or both, and uh, see what effect it had on power. So after running about three sets of pistons through the engine, we had a fairly good idea of what it did. So now you know where I'm coming from, the net, from there. Now if you do the intake, if you've got a short cam, it will tend to bolster the uh, uh, engine torque from very low RPM. If it's a fairly big cam, we'll say like 280, 290 degrees, now I'm talking about a hydraulic here, at 6,000s, then we find that cut cuttering the uh, uh, intake alone doesn't do much until you get to around about 4500 RPM. If you cut her both of them, you, you don't really get an increase until above 4500. Now about 7 horsepower on an otherwise 450 horsepower engine was about the best we saw. Now 7 horsepower you wouldn't normally have, so is it worth doing? Well, it's going to take you about a half an hour per piston, so there's 4 hours work. Um, other styles of cutouts will work better, but they're really complex to do, so we won't go into those right now. Uh, do I have anything else to say on this? Not really. I think that's about it. So, uh, well, that brings us to the end of another PowerTech 10. Again, it's a little more than 10 minutes, but hey, you should have the means to get another 5 to 7 horsepower from your engine that you didn't have before. Now then, uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any uh, thing that you didn't like about it, then tell us what it was. We'll see if we can fix it the next time round. So th thank you for viewing and I'll see you on the next video.